My name is Leonard Weiss and today we'll be going down the rabbit hole of Kierkegaard's concept of love. Today's episode is offered and spoken by Bob Stern. Bob is professor of philosophy at the University of Sheffield and he's an expert on German idealism, Hegel in particular. While it is fair to say that Bob is a passionate defender of Hegel's philosophy, he is equally enthusiastic when it comes to understanding the many ways in which other thinkers have critically engaged with Hegel, of whom the Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard is a good example. Today we will find out how Kierkegaard uses an idea from Hegel's logic to explain why even our most intimate relations to other persons always also involve a relation to God. So without further ado, thank you very much, Bob, for guiding this philosophical exploration of Kierkegaard's concept of love. Thanks very much for having me on the podcast. In this short talk, I'd like to consider what the 19th century Danish philosopher and theological thinker Søren Kierkegaard might mean when he says that God must stand as a middle term between individuals who love each other as neighbours, in accordance with the biblical injunction to love our neighbours as ourselves. What does Kierkegaard have in mind when talking about God as a middle term here, and is it an attractive position? Or is it, as various critics have argued, highly problematic and threatening to the very idea of love between individuals. Kierkegaard mainly discusses his middle term idea in his book Works of Love, 1847, which, rather unusually for him, was written in his own name rather than a pseudonym as a series of so-called Christian discourses published around this time. Its central focus is on love and the various forms it can take, and in particular on how love figures in what Jesus gives as the second commandment, or so-called royal law, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. At several points in the discussion, Kierkegaard argues that for love between neighbours to be possible, God must operate as a middle term. This terminology is taken from discussions about syllogisms in Aristotelian logic, where the middle term links the first premise to the conclusion by appearing in both premises and providing a kind of bridge from the first premise to the conclusion. For example, all human beings are mortal, Socrates is a human being, therefore Socrates is mortal. The term human being acts as a middle term here, and as it, get, as it gets us from the first premise to the conclusion by linking the first two premises in the right way. Kierkegaard himself was in general not a great fan of formal logic, and particularly the revival in syllogistic logic championed by Hegel. So he was perhaps having a little joke at the Hegelian's expense in using this rather dry and technical vocabulary to make what for him is much more than a logical point. The question is then, what did Kierkegaard really mean by claiming that God acts as a middle term in this way? I'm going to consider three different ways we might think about it, all of which are suggested by reading Kierkegaard, but some of which may be more problematic than others. The first way is suggested by this well-known paragraph by Kierkegaard in Works of Love. Quote, Worldly wisdom is of the opinion that love is a relationship between persons. Christianity teaches that love is a relationship between a person, God, a person. That is, that God is the middle term. However beautiful a relationship of love has been between two people or among many, however complete all their desire and all their bliss have been for themselves in mutual sacrifice and devotion, even though everyone has praised this relationship. If God and the relationship with God have been omitted, then this, in the Christian sense, has not been love, but a mutually enchanting illusion of love. To love God is to love oneself truly. To help another person to love God is to love another person. To be helped by another person to love God 
is to be loved. End of quote. At the end here, Kierkegaard seems to be suggesting that God is the middle term because what it is to love another person is to help them to love God. Rather than helping them to love themselves, as to love oneself is also to love God, or to love you, because this would make love for them all about you. So God is the middle term between two people, because love of God is what connects the aims of the lover with the person they love. However, Kierkegaard's fellow Danish philosopher and theologian, K. E. Lugstrup, who lived in the 20th century rather than the 19th, has claimed that this is a mistaken view of love and that Jesus would agree with him. For, he argues, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus portrays the Good Samaritan as the exemplar of neighbour love, but does not have him getting the injured Jewish traveller to love God, whatever that might mean. Rather, he just tends to the traveller's physical needs, and so seems to love the traveller in a way that does not involve God as a middle term in this respect at all. A further worry emerges from this passage, also from Kierkegaard works of love. Quote, the God relationship is the mark by which the love for people is recognised as genuine. As soon as a love relationship does not lead me to God, and as soon as I, in the love relationship, do not lead the other to God, then the love, even if it were the highest bliss and delight of affection, even if it were the supreme good of the lover's earthly life, is still not true love. This the world can never get into its head, that God in this way not only becomes the third party in every relationship of love, but really becomes the sole object of love, so that it is not the husband who is the wife's beloved, but it is God, and it is the wife who is helped by the husband to love God, and conversely, and so on. End quote. Here, Kierkegaard seems to be saying, the husband will help the wife to love God because it is God who he loves above all else. And then one might wonder, what has happened to his love for his wife, if God is the sole object of his love? Of course, there is more to be said, but let us accept this objection to the, this view of God as a middle term, and ask instead whether there might be other, more plausible views one could have which are to be attributed to Kierkegaard. The second alternative is not that having God as a middle term means that you must help your neighbour to love God, but rather that unless you stand in the right relation to God, you cannot stand in the right relation of love to your neighbour. For without the God relation, you will either love them too little or too much. Why might you love them too little? One answer, common in the Lutheran tradition in which Kierkegaard is working, is that otherwise you will feel pride in yourself and anxiety about your own well-being and relation to others, all of which makes it hard to genuinely love and care for others. For, it seems plausible to say, if you feel pride, you will look down on others in a way that makes it hard to say you love them even if you act rightly towards them. And on the other hand, if you feel anxious about your own status and your own well-being in general, you will also be too preoccupied with yourself to care much for others. To deal with these obstacles to neighbour love, Kierkegaard argues that it is important to stand in relation to God. For on the one hand, you cannot feel pride when you compare yourself to God who clearly puts all your achievements in the shade. Just as I cannot feel pride as a runner if I meet Mo Farah. On the other hand, my anxieties are overcome if I feel loved and valued by God in a way that enables me to escape from my self-concern and relate to others. Thus, Kierkegaard can claim, without God as a middle term in the relationship between you and your neighbour, you cannot come to love them enough. Conversely, he can claim, you might also love your neighbour too much. 
This relates to an argument Kierkegaard makes elsewhere regarding the relation he sees between what he calls relative and absolute value. Put simply, he thinks to attribute absolute value to something is to see it as crucial to your life, as what gives your life meaning and purpose, whereas to attribute relative value to it is to see it as of some value, but not to be so crucial. So, for example, I might attribute relative value to a half marathon I am due to run. I think it is important to me. I would like to do well in it, and I will be pleased if I do so. But I don't attribute absolute value to it. That is, I don't think the value of my life depends on it. And if I do badly or drop out, there are plenty of other things in my life that matter just as well. However, Kierkegaard thinks, it is easy for us to get this wrong and attribute absolute value to what really should just have relative value for us. For example, people seem to think that everything depends on getting some job, buying some house or car, or even whether their football team win the league or tournament, as in the famous quote, or maybe misquote, from Bill Shankly, some people believe football is a matter of life and death, I can assure you it is much, much more important than that. Kierkegaard also thinks the same can happen in relationships. One can attribute absolute value to another person, too, such that without them, one feels one's life is empty, meaningless, pointless. Now, you might ask, what's wrong with that? Isn't that what love is all about? I agree that this can sound tempting, but in fact Kierkegaard thinks this is a mistake because it makes the love relationship too claustrophobic, as it were, as if really the other person and you were one and the same, such that without them, you are nothing. But this is actually a damaging way to see someone, even someone you love very much, for then they become indistinguishable from you, and you lose your own sense of self. But assuming Kierkegaard is right about this, how can we avoid it? How can we avoid attaching absolute value to things which should really be given only relative value, including other people? Kierkegaard's answer is by standing in the right relation to God, who really does have absolute value. That is, for Kierkegaard, Without God, life really is empty, meaningless, pointless. But then if you properly attach absolute value to God, you will then properly attach relative value to everything else, including other people. And so will love them to the right degree, without smothering them or being smothered. So now we can see why Kierkegaard might think that having God as a middle term might help you to love the neighbour Neither too much, nor too little, but just right. Finally, let me mention a third option, which is compatible with this second one. Namely, that by viewing God as the middle term, this can build a bridge between you and your neighbour by seeing how God is equally related to both of you, and also all other human beings, and thus that there is a deep similarity between you your neighbour and all others, notwithstanding our various differences. Kierkegaard thinks that by bringing God in this way, it makes preferential love much harder, as this is based on what makes one person more lovable than anyone else, whereas neighbour love is grounded on their fundamental similarity, which is that all of us stand in the same relation to God. Kierkegaard seems to make this point in works of love when he writes, quote, But the Christian love commandment commands loving God above all else, and then loving the neighbour. In erotic love and friendship, preferential love is the middle term. In love for the neighbour, God is the middle term. Love God above all else, then you also love the neighbour, and in the neighbour, every human being. Only by loving God above all else 
can one love the neighbour in the other human being? The other human being, this is the neighbour who is the other human being in the sense that the other human being is every other human being. End quote. We have thus considered three ways of understanding Kierkegaard's idea that God is needed to serve as a middle term in love of the neighbour. First, that to love your neighbour is to help them to love God. Second, that the God relation will ensure you love others neither too little nor too much. And third, that this relation will enable you to love everyone as an object of love. We considered an objection to the first option from Lugstrup. We do not have time to consider objections to the other two. But the obvious question to ask is whether Kierkegaard is right that a middle term of some sort is needed. And if it is, why it has to be God. Kierkegaard, as a Christian writer, obviously thought this is necessary, and many might agree with him. But others, including Lothrop, have sought for more secular alternatives. But to decide whether or not they are right would lead us down another rabbit hole that we must stand back from for now. Mm -hmm.